Boo, bitch. I'm sorry, that was really mean. This is a scary video. Well, not really scary. Let's be real. I'm not, I don't really have something like that. God, reset, Mike. Okay, buffering, reloaded. Boom. Anyway, this is another brief compilation video. This is from my backup page on TikTok back when I called the, the, the that page making a scarer uh, when I used it to make, you know, content about spooky stuff or paranormal stuff. Uh, so this is uh, a series I had called America's Most haunted really clever i know yeah no it's not clever at all i'm sure it's been used a thousand times before mike you're an idiot okay uh this is only five videos uh, they're all about three minutes long so it's carried uh, one it's like 78 minutes i think right if my if my math serves me correctly uh which it always does not uh so okay <laughs> This is just five stories about uh, haunted buildings or locations in America. Uh, so, viewer discretion, uh, I guess, advised, I guess. I, 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 I don't know, man. I'm Hello, scarers. Still deciding how I like that. Let's start off the newly branded page with a series called America's Most Haunted. Yes, I'll do an international series as well. Today, we're going to the Stanley Hotel. It is located in Estes Park, Colorado. It is a beautiful hotel that I have always wanted to go to. The Stanley Hotel has 142 rooms you can book and it is considered a colonial revival hotel. To those who don't know, it actually inspired Stephen King's The Shining, specifically the biggest character in the movie and the book, The Overlook Hotel. It opened on the 4th of July in 1909. The Stanley Hotel even put a hedge maze in the back, just like from the movie. They have a really cool looking bar. Hopefully you're not talking to any ghostly bartenders there. It's just a really pretty hotel. Now, there's no known, like, really recorded deaths that have happened at the Stanley Hotel. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. There was a gas explosion there once, um, but it injured a lot of people, including a um, chambermaid by the name of Elizabeth Wilson. She died much later on in life, but after her death, people then said they started to see the ghost of a chambermaid at the Stanley Hotel. People have captured ghostly photos, well, what they claim to be ghostly photos. Apparently, this is one. That just looks like a woman looking out of the window, but I could be wrong. Now, I believe in ghosts, 100%. But I find some of this stuff sometimes very questionable. Don't get me wrong, I ain't walking down that scary-ass hallway by myself. Play with us! This here is allegedly the spirit of a girl, captured during a tour of the hotel. Again, it looks too real. So, what are we supposed to be seeing in this photo? This is a somewhat recent photograph taken in a panoramic view. The person taking the picture says there was no one there at the time of this photo. But you can clearly see a human figure, possibly a woman. What do you think? Ghost Hunters has gone there a few times. So has Ghost Adventures. Really, CM Punk? Okay. Now, Jason and Grant did catch some pretty creepy EVPs there once. Take a listen. How far back does it go, G? Hello, my ass. Just said hello, hello. Yeah, there it is. Who are you? Shh. Oh. Who is there? Is what that thing said. Uh, it's the little chubby lady from Poltergeist. Oh my god. Uh uh. Okay, bye, Stanley Hotel. Hello, scarers. Boo. Today we go to one of the homes of the voodoo. <laughs> I should be banned from accents forever. <laughs> it's time for another episode of America's Most Haunted. <laughs> we travel to New Orleans, Narlins, Louisiana, to the LaLaurie Mansion. This was Delphine LaLaurie. 
Back in 1832, when I was in my 13th year of college, Dr. Leonard LaLaurie and his wife Marie LaLaurie, pictured here with all of her frumpness, they had a three-story building constructed in New Orleans. And pretty quickly after this, Marie Delphine LaLaurie, she would become known as the cruel mistress of the haunted house. Allegedly, it was this third marriage of hers that led to her madness. And damn, girl, save some sleeves for the rest of us, you bitch. So in this house, they also had a slave quarters built. Yeah, they owned slaves. Again, 1834. And well, um, slaves were already being mistreated, but she doubled and tripled and quadrupled down on that. She would become one of America's very first female serial killers. Mm-hmm. So, there was an attic built in this mansion, and it was right above where the arrow is pointing now. The frumpy psychopath, well, she basically turned this into a torture chamber. So, what would she do to her slaves up there? She whipped them, she gouged their eyes out, poked holes in their skulls, and left maggots in those holes to infest themselves. There was also rumors that the cuckoo could chew nut job of New Orleans. She broke almost every bone in a certain slave's body, only to reset them in the form of a crab. She would stir their brains when she removed the top of their skull off. She would remove organs. Most of these people, by the way, they would die horribly. And she just let their dead bodies just fester up there. It's rumored she killed at least 62 slaves, but possibly somewhere near 100. In 1834, her dumb little mansion was burnt to the ground. Supposedly, a slave in the kitchen started the fire on purpose. You know what? Go, girl. That is when all of her evil deeds would finally be exposed, due to all of the horrific remains of the bodies. So her and her family fled, you know, like brave people do. They bolted to France where she would allegedly die in 1849. The house was rebuilt, and it still stands to this day. These are allegedly ghosts that were captured. If any building ever is haunted, it's definitely this one. I don't see it. Where's the ghost? You can tour it today. Who wants to go? Hello, scarers. <laughs> Every time it hurts my throat. Welcome to another episode of America's Most Haunted. Boo! <laughs> I'm just kidding. <clears throat> Pictured behind me is Lamont Mansion, which is now referred to as Summerwind Mansion. The exact construction date of Lamont Mansion is not really known, but the story goes that it was built sometime in the early 20th century. In 1916, it was purchased by this fella. Ooh, hey, hold on, guy, hold on, look. Huh? Twinsies! Huh? Okay. This is Robert Patterson Lamont. The house was originally a fishing lodge before he purchased it for himself. They began a renovation process in 1917, which apparently took two years to complete. There's a story that Robert Lamont inside the home fired a shot from his pistol at something he said was a ghost, and it scared him and his family out of the house forever. By the way, this house is in the West Bay Lake, or the Land O' Lakes area of Wisconsin. After Lamont and his family abandoned the home, at some point Arnold and Ginger Hinshaw moved into the house. The legend says that the two of them were so disturbed and so frightened by the ghosts in this building that Arnold had a nervous breakdown and Ginger wanted to take her life. Ginger's father, Raymond Bober, he was the one to actually purchase the house for that couple. He claimed that the mansion was haunted, and that's when he said, we're changing the name from Lamont to Summerwind. He claims that the rooms in the house have the ability to change shape and change dimensions whenever it wanted to. He claimed the house was haunted by an 18th century explorer by the name of Jonathan Carver. He said people who worked in the mansion, like the uh, maids, there were voices heard throughout the house when no one was there. One night, a full-figured apparition appeared to them in the kitchen. He's just hungry. In 1988, Lamont slash Summerwind Mansion was hit by lightning and it burned to the ground. 
And now it is nothing but ruins. Is he standing on the side of a giant treasure box? Sir? Sir? Mm. Do the ghosts still roam the woods? Some people say it's the most haunted location on Earth. My God. Bye! Hello, Scarerers! It's time for another episode of America's Most Haunted. And I'm really excited to talk about this one. This is the stunning Winchester Mansion, sometimes referred to as the Winchester Mystery Mansion. Now, it is known more for its bizarre history and its incredibly strange design than it is for its ghosts, but it is reportedly haunted. So, oh, hey bud, a quick history lesson. This man, who was clearly never taught to shave, was William Wirt Winchester. He was the treasurer of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company until his death in 1881. This was his wife, Sarah Winchester, in the only known photograph of her. When he died, she inherited $20 million, which is equivalent to $550 million today, and she got almost 50% of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. She would become very wealthy. Around 1884, she would leave New Haven, Connecticut and move to California, where she purchased a farmhouse in Santa Clara Valley, where she would begin construction on La Lanada Villa, which then would become the Winchester Mystery Mansion. She hired a whole bunch of carpenters and they began construction on her seven-story home. She never once consulted an actual architect, and so what she did was she kept adding and adding and adding to the house. Now, when the 1906 earthquake happened, the home, well, it, it lost a lot. And today it now stands at four stories tall. Now, Sarah would claim, or the rumor goes at least, that before she left Connecticut, she consulted with a medium who claimed to be channeling her dear late husband. And the spirits told her to always keep adding to the house. She also allegedly believed that the house was haunted by the victims of people who were shot and killed by Winchester rifles. So to appease them, she also kept adding to the house. And holy shit. By the way, real quick, the movie and book Rose Red by Stephen King was inspired by this house. You have stairways that lead to nowhere. She was obsessed with a number 13, so many of the stairways have 13 steps. She built a entrance to the house known as the carriage room. One stairway has uh, seven different turns to go up one flight. This was her bedroom, the master bedroom. Looks gorgeous. Not weird or creepy at all. This is the entrance to her seance room. The seance room has only one way to enter, but three ways to exit. It also has 13 hooks throughout it. She has doorways that led to nothing, including a doorway that literally leads to a drop. The door to nowhere. God damn it, I really want to go to this house so bad. You can tour it, by the way. Stairways that lead to this, nothing. Look at this fucking weird staircase, Jesus. She has an eccentric ballroom, old-timey dining room, a door on the floor. This place is nuts. I want to go. So bad. <laughs> Hello, Scarabers. God, don't do that again, that hurt. It's time for another episode of America's Most Haunted. So why am I doing an accent? Today we're going to the very tippy tip 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 of Washington State. And we are going specifically to the San Juan Islands. Ooh, look how pretty it is. This is Roche Harbor. Mmm. The scariest places are always in harbors. Welcome to the Hotel de Haro. Such a spooky place. Stop singing. Okay. The Hotel de Haro was built in 1886 by a man named John McMillan. And we all know anything built pre-1900 immediately haunted. Right from the fucking get-go. So one of the spookiest aspects of this hotel is something built off the property. When McMillan built this place, well, I guess he wanted his family to be, um, immortalized for all of eternity? See, when you walk down this path... What does that say? Oh, fare thee well, and if forever, still forever, fail thee well. Your coming gave us pleasure? What the fuck is this? Is this a porn hotel? What is this? Oh, I have no one in my life, so I'm talking to no one. When you get to the end of this, there's this. It's a, it's a mausoleum. Uh, so in each column are the ashes of Macmillan's dead family. 
He even built a specifically broken column, and this was to symbolize the unfinished work we leave behind. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna need a lot of broken columns at my mausoleum. It gets creepier. What in the Game of Thrones bullshit is this? Okay, so in the middle of this mausoleum is a medieval dining room table. You ain't gonna win that shit on the prices, right? And each seat represents one of his dead family members. The most common ghost known from this hotel is one named Ada. She was actually a servant for the McMillan family. Now, sometime in the 50s, the new owners of the hotel, they found an urn with Ada's ashes in them. So the new owners entombed her ashes in this mausoleum. I don't know where. The problem is they didn't use the name Ada. They gave her some other name and now apparently she's pissed. Wouldn't you be? So now the ghost of Ada is seen roaming the island, wailing and crying. Suck it up, buttercup. Another ghost is a former governess of the hotel, Mrs. Beaning. She likes to play pranks on people. That's rude. Sometimes when you blow out a candle, she likes to relight it. That's fucking dangerous. She also likes to, like, flip light switches a thousand times. God, what a bitch. Some say they've seen her walk on this staircase. Can I get some service here or what? Jesus.